where is the money? The government insists all will be well soon, but many questions remain. No cash at several ATMs across the country. जो तो तीनों चारों बैंकों में आया हूँ उसमें कहीं से भी कैश कैश नहीं है सर मैं यहाँ इस एरिया के सारे एटीएम दो दिन से ट्राई कर रहा हूँ अमाउंट हाँ। बिल्कुल भी नहीं आ रहा किसी एटीएम में it jolted the center into a series of statements and explanations which raised more questions the most crucial and telling by the finance minister who tweeted the cause was a quote sudden and unusual increase unquote in some areas the quotes notably are his there is no reason to believe for anyone to have any fear or any apprehension please be completely assured that our banking is totally totally safe Then a government statement said an unusual spot in demand is seen in some parts like Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh and Bihar. In certain states the demand has gone up and uh, these states are the states of MP Telangana, Andhra, North Bihar and uh, Punjab. Possible reason is that uh, the procurement season has started. But all these explanations raise more questions than give answers. If it is seasonal procurement related then how come similar cash shortages didn't happen mid April in previous years what was the reason behind this sudden unusual increase in cash demand there is more cash than the day demonetization was announced so where has the cash gone in particular why is there a shortage of 2000 rupee notes that the prime minister introduced as a means to cut black money do 2000 rupee notes kaha ja rahe hain kaun dawa kar raha hai kaun cash ki kami pada kar raha hai Government sources say there is 6.7 lakh crore rupees worth of 2000 rupee notes in circulation from the 1st of April to the 13th of April 45000 crore currency was added now the government says it will increase the circulation of 500 200 and 100 rupee notes in the coming weeks the government says 85% of all ATMs are functioning normally and are taking steps to supply cash आपके जेब में से पचास 500 सौ रूपए हजार रूपए का नोट छीना नीरव मोदी जी के जेब में डाला प्रधानमंत्री एक शब्द नहीं कहते पार्लियामेंट में खड़े होने से डरते हैं वॉट इज गोइंग ऑन दिस इज अ फाइनेंशियल इमरजेंसी वी डोंट वॉन्ट द पीपल टू सफर लाइक दिस कुछ राज्यों में जो है पैसे अधिक हो गए कुछ में कम हो गए हैं स्टेट वाइज कमेटी बना दिया है और रिजर्व बैंक अपने भी एक कमेटी बना करके वो ये कर रहा है बिना रिजर्व बैंक के अनुमति के वो पैसे ट्रांसफर नहीं किए जा सकते हैं गवर्नमेंट ऑफिशियल्स रिफ्यूज टू कमेंट ऑन वेदर कैश वॉज बिंग डाइवर्टेड बाई सम फॉर दी कर्नाटका इलेक्शन हवेवर दे डिड से दैट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दी आर बी आई द इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट वुड ऑल्सो कंडक्ट इंक्वायरीज विद अनुराग द्वारी माया शर्मा एंड उमा सुधीर दिस इज ओनीतम ओझा फॉर एन And I spoke just a little while earlier to uh, Sanjeev Sanyal, who is the principal economic advisor in the Finance Ministry on this cash crunch. Mr. Sanyal, thanks for joining us on NDTV this evening. What exactly is the reason for this cash shortage? There was a rather mysterious tweet by the Finance Minister earlier today, saying, in quotes that he had put, that the cause was a sudden and unusual increase in some areas. What exactly did he mean? So what you've had uh, in the last uh, few days um, of, uh, is a, as he mentioned, a sudden and unusual spike in in demand for cash, um, and happening in not all over the country, but in specific areas, uh, particularly in Karnataka and in Telangana, and then spreading into surrounding states. Although uh, <coughs> today we had reports from other parts of the country as well, uh, but basically what you have is a sudden demand for uh, cash, which. Uh, was quite unusual as he pointed out but then do we know why that's the case this unusual demand for cash um at this stage it is not entirely unclear um and it would not be right for me to speculate the exact reasons about uh, why or who um caused this particular spike uh, nevertheless uh, let me point out that our first round of response is really to make sure that uh between the finance ministry and the reserve bank of india we coordinate and make sure that enough cash is available on the ground in wherever the demand may be so our first um, responsibility is to make sure that there is no reason for concern and that uh irrespective of why people demand this cash there is ad- adequate cash available through the atms and uh, through the bank branches 
Well, you know, there are many theories that are doing the rounds as to why this has happened and that's bound to happen. But for instance, one of the theories is that if it's seasonal procurement related, as in fact, one official actually said on record today, then how come we didn't see similar cash shortages uh, in mid-April in previous years? So as I said, it is unusual. Uh, obviously, uh, demand for cash always goes up and down. So it is something that, you know, there are cycles in it. And even in the best of times, you'll have uh, spikes. But uh, as the finance minister pointed out, uh, the level of this particular spike is certainly unusual. And it's also uh, concentrated, uh, at least initially, in a few places. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, this is something that um, needs to be responded to in terms of supplying cash uh, as quickly as possible to those areas. Uh, incidentally, the government has more than adequate cash in reserve. Uh, and um, between the uh, uh, Reserve Bank and the government, we will make sure that the supply is reached. And if necessary, more cash will be printed to provide it. So there is absolutely no reason why the public should be concerned about this. Well, actually, I think it is concerning because it seems to be worrying that we don't seem to really know why this has happened, that you're not able to pinpoint a reason or reasons clearly. So you have to realize in an economy, any economy, but certainly in a large and complex economy like ours, uh, there are always cycles and spikes. So uh, it tends to happen within some range. Uh, this particular one, uh, the, you know, this, this um, increase in demand didn't happen uh, all of a sudden. There was some increase in demand for a little while. And then there was a spike, which happened relatively recently. Um, but as I said, I will not want to speculate on exactly why. Our first response has got to be to make sure that there's enough cash available. And then we will, of course, investigate the matter and respond to it uh, uh, as necessary. But I do not uh, want to speculate at this juncture. Obviously, we have some uh, idea why this has happened, but this may not be the appropriate time to uh, be uh, you know, adding to uh, the speculation. We will analyze it carefully and respond to it uh, rather than have some sort of knee-jerk reaction. But let me repeat yet again, we do, the first response has got to be to make sure there's adequately cash available well, you know, on it, the ground. Actually, the, the government's responses have raised more questions than answers, uh, clearly. And, and for instance, uh, you're all saying that there's more cash today in the system than there was the day before demonetization was announced. So where is that money? If there's no cash shortage, yet there is a cash shortage. So you have to realize the economy is growing. So even uh, <clears throat> in the natural course of things, the more cash will be demanded by a larger economy. So since our economy currently is much larger than it was at the eve of demonetization, even allowing for the fact that we now uh, there is less cash in this uh, uh, as a proportion of GDP, uh, in total amount that will be more. Um, so and in, even in within that there will be spikes and uh, you know and so on, which is also a part of the normal uh, scheme of things. So the economy generally does absorb uh, more cash. However, certainly if there has been an, uh, what appears to be an unusual spike, uh, particularly concentrated in a few areas, uh, we will investigate it thoroughly. Why is there a shortage of 2,000 rupee notes that were actually introduced back when demonetization happened as a means to cut out black money? Why, why are there so few 2,000 rupee notes right now? Well, there may be many reasons. One of them, of course, is that <coughs> it was our view uh, that um, the smaller denomination notes uh, were more used, are more used for uh, actual transactions. Uh, so the, the notes of 500 and below are what we gave a preference in terms of uh, uh, adding to the uh, circulation over many months. And uh, the 2,000 rupee note was not being printed in the same sort of uh, uh, pace. So that may have been, the, but there are many reasons why they may be the case. Maybe there is actual genuine demand for 2,000 rupee notes, uh, which we had not anticipated. Of course, there may be a case of hoarding these notes for many several reasons. So there are many reasons I, which I would not like to speculate on. But um, it was the case that we had, as far as printing notes was concerned, had a preference for printing the smaller denominations because that is what is used by common people uh, for day-to-day -day transactions. Right. So finally, Mr. Sanyal, when can we actually expect this immediate problem to be resolved? 
Well, we have taken uh, uh, cognizance of this. Um, both the Reserve Bank and the Finance Ministry are working in tandem to solve it. It should not take more than uh, a few days because, as I said, uh, we have more than adequate uh, cash in reserves. Um, and if necessary, we'll print more as well. And these, this money will be uh, you know, sent through. So it takes a few days for logistical reasons to get it into actually reaching it to ATMs and so on. But nevertheless, uh, we will um, do it uh, quite quickly. So I want to assure the public that there is, this is not uh, something to be too concerned about. Um, you know, a, a hiccup maybe, but uh, we will sort it out shortly. Sanjeev Sanyal, thanks for joining us today. Uh, an advisor to the Finance uh, Ministry there, Mr. Sanyal, uh, giving the government's version of this, not revealing much in terms of what the reasons are, what uh, is leading to these cash withdrawals at ATMs. Obviously, the government has a theory, but at this point, we don't know whether that means they think it's related to the Karnataka elections, whether it's related to some other conspiracy, um, who's withdrawing that money, why. To talk about this tonight, uh, we have here in the studio with us Mihir Sharma, Senior Fellow with the Observer Research Foundation, also a Senior Columnist, Shubhamoy Bhattacharya, Consultant Editor with the Business Standard. Uh, we also have Gaurav Vallabh, Spokesperson of the Congress Hello. Party, Sunil Gupta, former Director of Punjab National Bank and Dena Bank, and Sunil Alag also joining us tonight. So, Mihir Sharma, have you been able to crack this mystery in the last few hours? What's happening? Where is this cash going? Well, I, I, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think that what, what's happened is that the Reserve Bank has probably miscalculated um, exactly what the proportion of notes that they should be printing are, how much currency they should actually be in circulation. As you heard Sanjeev say, um, the amount of cash in circulation as a percentage of the economy, uh, of the uh, overall size of the economy, is still significantly lower than it was uh, before demonetization. Uh, the Which explains why, even though we have more cash post demonetization back in circulation, it's not actually. We feel like we're still yeah. being rationed to yeah. a, to an extent. Uh, the government uh, has tried to sell this, I think, in the past, every now and then, as an achievement. Um, it shows that more digital transactions are taking place. They claim, but um, I think uh, it's quite clear that it's no longer an achievement. It's you know, cash has to be demand driven. And what the government has done and the RBI has done is it failed to predict how much, uh, how many currency bills people actually want to hold and in what denomination. Remember when they took out 500 and 1,000 rupee notes, that was 86% of currency, right, in circulation. Uh, high denomination notes now, uh, the 2,000 rupee notes are about a third of currency in circulation. People do want to have high denomination notes and if they're hoarding those high denomination notes, um, as Sanjeev said, uh, maybe that's because uh, that's normal behavior and it has been normal behavior for some time to hold a certain amount of your savings in high de denomination currency and there's just less of that around. They're just So is it, Shubhamoy, you think, just incompetency by the RBI that, uh, as Mihir seems to suggest, that it, it, it just miscalculated on how much cash should be in circulation? Because I still don't understand when the finance minister tweeted today and he talked about a sudden and unusual increase and put that in quotes himself and didn't, you know, elaborate on that further, it seemed to be alluding to something else. Well, you know, broadly, <coughs> RBI printing of notes over the years has been sort of a rule of thumb. Now, that's where the answer to what you're saying essentially lies. Demonetization created a break. RBI never had a very granular data of how much cash is demanded by the public state-wise. Uh, the denomination wise, you know, that sort of a dinner, RBI was more like every year's cash supply was just a percentage higher of last year's percent, uh, cash supply. Post denomination, when 86% of the currency was taken out, RBI had to do, redo the math once again. Now, it's obviously what the current situation is showing is that that math hasn't held up. Why hasn't it held up? Because initially RBI had printed 2000 rupee note for obvious reasons that that was helping to bring in the value into the circulation. Now, as Sanjeev Sanel himself is saying, 2,000 rupee note is not being printed in that amount. Remember, the printing presses haven't gone up. The capacity hasn't really changed in the last two years. So what's happening? In the same capacity, other notes are being printed. Which other notes? The smaller denomination, himself said so. The 500 and even lesser than that, 2,000, 200. 200, yeah. Now, if that is happening, then obviously the volume of notes that would be demanded, even assuming that there's no increase in the amount of notes, uh, amount of cash that's ne necessary, would rise. So that 
is the first reason that then the, the moment that the 2000 got broken and 500 which itself is a big difference between 2000 and 500 and going further down and I understand that the 500 note is actually even less being printed this is the 200 rupee yeah. note which is now being massively being pushed in the market. So, when that happens obviously the volumes would be needed to be higher which explains the present spurt. Two things also further happening uh, we need about roughly about right now we have about a 17 uh, lakh currency notes in circulation we need about 22 given the current GDP yeah. size. Yeah. Uh, that's a clear so difference. So, actually, of technically, five. short of cash based on five. the way our that's economy one. has grown. Second, GDP is growing, it's definitely picked up. So, the amount of cash transaction, for instance, even for paying GST by the small traders, would be rising. The every other, the, if, the, if the sectors, the economy definitely, the, you can see some amount of revival. When that's happening, there's a large amount of cash transaction that's coming out. So, the velocity of circulation would be rising. And if that is so, so what do you the think Arun Jaitley was talking about? No, so that now the third thing is there's one particular data point I would like to see what is the velocity of circulation in South India. There is because of Karnataka now. You are hinting not just at that. Karnataka. In you know the other there are other states also which are fairly poised towards election. So what's happening there? There is some data which seems to suggest we still don't have a data in public, but that the velocity of circulation there has gone down. Now, if that is so, that means there is a hoarding. Now, why is the hoarding happening? Is it just, is it unusual? It is not unusual because over the past but few years, we can see that that is not know, happening. But you know, at so the end of the day, it comes down to obviously, uh, Sunil Alag, uh, uh, at the very least, an incompetence of the RBI, which seems to have totally miscalculated how much, at, at the very least, how much cash is needed in the system. I mean, people have already suffered during demonetization and it is happening again. No, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this spurt seems to have taken place in the last 30 days from whatever information that's available and it's gone up by about 40 percent. So we have to try and analyze what has happened in the last 30 days that people have started drawing out more cash. Uh, people are blaming somehow the bill that is financial bill and there's some panic about the banking system. Is our money safe and therefore people are drawing. But take a look at what has really happened. There are about three or four things which have happened on the same day. Besaki. Uh, the Bengali New Year as well as the South Indian New Year. All that has taken place in the same day. And most people tend to take out cash at New Year's time to give us gifts to families. So maybe that could be one of the reasons for spurts. And one more thing, it's a coincidence that's happening in Karnataka and Telangana is what, according to the government, in which case the elections are around the corner. Now I'm not saying uh, what that could be a reason, but there are three or four things that have happened in the last 15 days, which normally doesn't happen in every year. So. It's very difficult for anybody to have estimated that, look, there will be a 40% increase in cash withdrawal. So let's not blame RBI or the government or anyone as to what has happened. And is this a common factor every year? Then they should have planned a lot better. If it is not, then they should look for the right reason. And that's all that I can say. Look, perhaps this has happened because of a number of factors happening in April and therefore, uh, and that's what's led to it. But it's a couple of days, but you can still use your credit card. You can still go and draw a self-check <coughs> from the banks. You can use your ATM. So it's only the ATM which is really looks like, which is really affected. So there's no dearth of cash, you know. Please tell that's that to all the I would like to point out. Who Let's are try using and analyze cash. why it's happening. It it's very happen, easy for us to say, we can use our credit it, cards, but you bank, know, we're, if, if you we're not technically a, that cashless you know, digital economy yet. Bank. We are cashless in a different way right now, but not, not exactly the way that we want it. I think that people who are facing a cash shortage no, right no, now will not, not agree with that. There's no society which is cashless. No, 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 no. Nidhi, why are we BJP, taking cashless The Prime cashless Minister shouldn't have talked about it, it, that, and that's another no, that's story. that's an extreme situation. Nowhere no. in the world is it cashless. But the point is that, uh, you no, know, no, as Shubhamal pointed out, we, we are actually so way short of, of the and currency in circulation that we should be having that. given no. our GDP growth. No, no, it's, and and it's that, like saying that does smack of incompetence is, no, no, of the no, no, RBI Nidhi, then. No, no, Nidhi, the Prime Minister can say anything he likes. We are in... No, 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 Nidhi, if you are saying that Look, corruption, he said he'll wipe it out. In which country in the world is it zero? So he, but uh, if it comes down, when you're moving towards a cashless so society, he can say anything he nobody likes says what? no cash will exist. Come on, I mean, he let's not hold be extreme. Our leaders accountable and there's for no what black and white in this. 
anyway, but that, that's a separate debate. So Mr. Sunil Gupta is with us here and he's a former director of Punjab National Bank. No, but then then are back. moving towards one, one the second, one second. So Did he Mr. say Gupta, zero cash? He said I cashless. I don't think at any point of time he said cashless meant zero cash. I don't know what he meant because the yeah. goalposts kept changing after demonetization. We're still trying to figure out what the aim was of demonetization. But Sunil Gupta, Mr. Sunil Gupta, how do you see this? Uh, no, uh, is this, is this no, the no. RBI's fault? Whose fault is this that we're facing this cash shortage according to you? Nidhi, it is very unfortunate and interesting to listen to Mr. Sanyal. He himself pointed out the solutions, the problem and the root of the problem. You see, he pointed out that the currency availability in proportion to increasing GDP or in uh, proportion to the uh, development of the uh, GDP or economy, we have the less cash. Why it is so? It is the responsibility of the RBI to calculate properly because uh, uh, GDP is not growing overnight. They should have calculated it properly. At the, the another problem, he uh, mentioned the seasonal uh, procurement. Seasonal procurement is not only this year. Every crop, there is a seasonal procurement all over India in different parts of the country. And RBI is there to calculate the requirement of the farmers, requirement of the people. And if they have not calculated it properly or they have not circulated the currency properly in the respective states, it is the prime of AC, the fault of the RBI and they should uh, be held responsible for it, whatever level uh, it is there. Government should take the responsibility. They are monitoring uh, the whole system of the economy. They should be held responsible. Government is uh, giving ball on the RBI, RBI is shifting it to the government. It should not be like this. One party should not give to the opposition, opposition should not give to the government. It is the collective responsibility of the RBI and the government. And let me, uh, let me point out one more thing, Nidhi, where from this problem started. This problem started last year when a FRDI bill was introduced in the Lok Sabha. Later it uh, was sent to the uh, committee, uh, parliamentary committee. You see, there were rumours. Uh, there were not rumours in fact. That's true. It was the part of the bill that over rupees 1 lakh if it is there and the, in case of loss it will be given, um, your deposit will be forfeited. You see, the government if it is not meant for seriously, and they want to withdraw it, they should withdraw it at this stage even before sending it to the parliamentary committee and they should give a very clear statement in the in, uh, public that they are not going to introduce this provision in the FRDI bill in future. Okay, I'm going to actually talk NPA about that bill uh, because I'm glad you brought it up because I, I will talk about that with the panel as well because there is this element uh, again, you know, all the mysterious theories that are floating around about why this ca these cash withdrawals have happened at this time. But Gaurav Vallabh, let me first ask you about the very interesting ba political back and forth that is happening on this. Shivraj Singh Chauhan is convinced that there is a big conspiracy behind the withdrawal of these notes, particularly the 2000 rupee notes. What do you think Arun Jaitley was talking about uh, when, when he talked about this sudden and unusual increase? See, if Shivraj Singh Chauhan And by is the way, a lot of uh, BJP supporters <coughs> think that it's the Congress that's taken up See, if they are them. aware of all those things, Things. All agencies are with them. You're trying to scare Monger. ED is, what, is, is with what them. SFIO is with them. Just have an examination, have an inquiry. I don't think anybody can do like this. He is just, he is not understanding what comment he had made, first thing. So I don't think there is any seriousness in that comment. Second thing, Nidhi, that we were talking about cash to GDP ratio. When Demo was introduced, Demo 1, we call it today as Demo 2. So when Demo 1 was there, the cash to GDP was 11 percent. Today, uh, today uh, it was 12 percent, today it is 11 percent. So it is not that cash came down and the big denomination notes, 2000 notes today is 40 percent of the total currency, 7 lakh out of 18.4 lakh and the 500 rupee notes are remaining 35 percent. So, big denominational notes are also not reduced. What happened? Why this had happened? See, the collateral damage of the Nirav and uh, Malia's case is the there is a serious dent on the banking system of the country and I will give you the data for that. The deposit growth in 16-17 in banking system was 15.3 percent. Today the deposit growth is 6.7 percent means it got reduced by 65 percent in one year because 
people are not trusting the banks anymore. So there is a dent on the banking system, there is a dent on the autonomy of the Reserve Bank of India uh, in the last two years. Second point that in the You're last scare mongering just I am not I am I am making all points with all data second point see how many ATMs are there majority of ATMs till date in last 550 days are over after demo net uh, demo one in last 550 days majority of ATMs are not recalibrated for 200 rupee notes so what type of governance is this forget about 2000 and are coming to a one source uh, research they are saying that 30 percent of 2000 rupee note is out of circulation what the what does this convey that 2.1 lakh crore rupees is again gone into the black they, 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 that is out of circulation. Okay, you know, you've raised actually two, three interesting points and I, I, I just want to take this back to me here. One, do you agree with this Congress theory that uh, and it's somehow linked to this FDRI thing as well that Mr. Gupta raised that people have lost faith in the banking system over the last year or so and uh, just to explain to viewers this FDRI bill in, in essence has a clause which says that if banks are in trouble then they can essentially use the money of their depositors to save themselves and that is why people have uh, some some reports say panicked and withdrawn money do you agree with that theory you know this is a kind of thing that is very difficult to sort of pin down um, I think we're very remote from the kind of place where this kind of rumor might be spreading um, it is true that deposit growth has been very low it is also true that over the last few months demand for gold has gone up uh, interestingly uh, which is usually a sign that people are searching for other stores of value. Something is going on. I would, I think it would be um, a little too hasty to suppose that it is uh, a lack of confidence in the banking sector. That, that, uh, um, that's not certain to my mind. But it's definitely, there's a question there that I think people should be asking. Chibumai, what do you think? Do you no, think, do you think mean, people are panicking about FDRI? No, I mean, there's a lot of reasons which we have been discussing, but to link deposit growth to the reason why this present thing is happening is, I mean, I, I, I don't buy Gaurav's No, no, I'm uh, talking theory. about Dan But Gaurav, uh, uh, Gaurav the that reputation. It simply doesn't, I mean, the, I, simply I'm the two simply I, are not connected. I, I'm not making let about demo two as a Let me show a data, growth. for instance, which is actually there about currency. We are plotting the data of currency withdrawal from ATMs. Now, it generally, it f it there's a mo almost every year, it's fairly similar. But in late FY18, there was a divergence, there was a spike. And remember, there was also a time when the 2000 rupee note was actually flooding the ATMs. So what did happen? A lot of people, a lot of people did actually take out 2000. When they're sort of in cashing the 2000 back in a literally into the banking system back or into the system, taking it out and using the 200, obviously there would be a spike. Now, RBI as the, which is the question that it raised, RBI as the currency uh, guide, uh, as the currency uh, manager of the country should have realized that this would happen sooner rather than later. And in fact, when the GDP starts rising, it is quite possible, it is obviously yeah. then that's the time when people will start circulating that currency. Even if people had hoarded the 2000, people would now be putting it back into the system and they would be demanding 2000 and that's where the one problem. problem. But I would still say that retail, you know, no matter how big is it, can't really explain such huge spike. That is where I would agree with me that, you know, it, we still need to see some more data points coming in to be able to figure out what really has happened, why this data has, why this uh, it has is, been it, a sudden thing. If you look at Retail the RBI statement this evening, and I'll just, you know, to the to formal to panel, I think. Uh, uh, the, 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 the RBI to statement to that came this in this, thing, this yeah. evening just now at, at about 8 o'clock. Now, and this is astounding, Sunil Alok, because I mean, for folks who are standing in line and, and going from ATM to ATM, and the RBI says that the shortage is largely due to logistical issues of replenishing ATMs frequently, and the recalibration of ATMs uh, is still underway. And that we're closely monitoring this. I mean, for God's sake, uh, uh, you know, get your act together. The RBI needs to get its act together. No, I, I fully agree with you, Nidhi, that look, the government and the RBI together did not anticipate this. And the average man is, is really in trouble on this one. But what has happened in the last 15 to 20 days, you know, everything was going along fine. People were getting money in ATM. Something has happened in the last 15 days to bring about this problem. So that is not fully analyzed. That's all I'm saying. And I don't think the average person is interested in what's coming in the bill and what's not coming in the bill because 
people like you and me are not standing in line and getting it out of our ATMs. We can easily write a check. We can go and get a self check. The banks are not stopping that at all. So it's the average man who is being affected. Now something has happened for people to go away and look at all that has happened in the last 15 days. And I listed out a few things for the average man. Look, there is a, a question of all the when I don't know how many years ago did Besaki and the South and the you know all the festival and the Bengali all fell on the same day, which is the 15th, followed by Akshya Tritya, which is coming up now. People are drawing cash to buy some jewelry. Now maybe the government should have anticipated this, but I don't think anyone can anticipate a 40 to 50 percent hike, which the government is talking about. It's like a run on the bank. No bank can when, can do it, but. I'm not justifying it from the point of view of anyone. But this 40-50% hike, if it is not understood clearly, this could happen again. And the government must wake I up think the and problem, so must RBI. I think the problem is that I think look, we now. really that's still don't know. That and that, that's what, not saying anything That's else. what even the finance I ministry feel, is Canada saying. Elections that we, the corner. Elections we don't, are we the don't corner. have a we don't have a sort of a clear reason as to why this has happened. But anyway, the government says the ATM should be replenished in the next few days. So we will hold them accountable to that and hopefully get to the bottom of this and to why this happened. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us on the show this evening.